Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Israel Brief brought to you by Lay of the Land. With myself, Rolene Marks, you know we do this every Monday to Thursday on our social media platforms. But uh, let's get into those top stories because that's why you called. And our top story is going to be proof whether or not ice cream melts under pressure. Yesterday, shortly after we came off air, ice cream giant Ben & Jerry's announced that they will no longer be selling their product in what they call the occupied Palestinian territories. Well, others see it as disputed territories. This, of course, led to an outcry on social media with many calling Ben & Jerry's out for their hypocrisy, saying it's very strange that they are focusing on one conflict zone in the world when there are over a hundred others. Some saying, will it really help the Palestinians to deny them their dessert? Others saying, well done Ben & Jerry's, you have now cured any problem in the Middle East. However, their owner company Unilever, which uh, uh, is responsible for over 129 different brands around the world, they released a statement saying that, you know, the conflict is really, really uh, complicated and complex, but they are committed to staying in Israel. Uh, The decision by Ben and Jerry's, which operates independently of uh, Unilever, their board makes decisions independent of Unilever, clashed actually with the giant Unilever. And uh, this could have significant effects on Ben & Jerry's Israel, who manufacture locally and employ quite a significant amount of people and are based in Israel South. Well, Israel wasn't going to take this lying down or being quiet, as is the Israeli way. And earlier today, Prime Minister Bennett spoke to Unilever, calling the action anti-Israel. Our Foreign Minister Yair Lapid also took to Twitter yesterday, shortly after the announcement, saying that this was was uh, morally reprehensible and anti-Semitic. And Lapid is very careful these days not to label everything anti-Semitic, but many said that the singling out of the Jewish state as opposed to other conflict areas in the world does leave a bad taste in the mouth and leaves one with an aftertaste of hypocrisy. We can't forget that Ben and Jerry's named a flavor after the Women's March, which featured leaders like Linda Sarsour, who denied Jewish Zionist women their presence at the march, saying that Zionists were creepy, and many Jewish women felt that there was no safe space for them to be a part of the Women's March. That is just one incident. They've also garnered a lot of criticism over the last year or so for being increasingly woke and politicizing their ice cream, which is very interesting because the Vermont-based company, uh, which made manufacturers in the United States also has to note that they are beholden to laws passed by at least 35 states, which makes any kind of boycott action like the one they announced yesterday illegal. Earlier today, Israel's ambassador to the United States and to the United Nations, Gilad Erdan, penned a letter to 35 governors, all of whom run states where any kind of boycott action or support of BDS, who is uh, uh, known to be anti-Semitic and uh, has been recognized as such by countries such as Austria and Germany. He penned them a letter stating that he hopes they take legal action against uh, Ben and Jerry's. What we do know for sure is that many Israelis are taking to the um, social media either with memes or going to their dustbins and getting rid of their supply of Ben and Jerry's. One thing we can say for certain here in Israel is that local is lovely and that our Golda manufactured uh, ice cream as well as Aldo's and various other local branches are sure to see a surge in sales and we will keep you updated as to what will happen next. In other news, Syria media reporting that the IDF allegedly struck targets north of uh, the Aleppo province last night. This was followed shortly by two rockets fired from Lebanon into northern Israel, one being intercepted and the other landing in an empty field. Israel shelled targets in Lebanon in response and Prime Minister Ben 
Bennett said earlier today that we will not allow any spillover from any conflict in Lebanon to come into Israel. And our last story takes us to a phone call, quite a significant phone call, in fact, between our Defense Minister Benny Gantz and Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas. Now, this is the first time in four years that a senior Israeli official has spoken with the Palestinian Authority president and that it has been made public. In the discussion, uh, Defense Minister Gantz wished the uh, president Eid Mubarak, that is a happy Eid, it is Eid al-Adha, that started last night. Someone should tell Rashida Talib because she made some uh, quite acrimonious accusations on Tisha B'Av just saying, and also they spoke about the importance of renewing trust and cooperation between Israelis and Palestinians. I think that maybe Ben and Jerry should have been present on that call. Who knows? But those are your top stories making headlines today. Don't forget to check out our original content on our website at www.layoftheland.online. We know that many of you um, can't bear the self-loathers and we have a very interesting deeply analytical uh, article by our resident advocate advocate Craig Snoyman on an article written by John Fish Hodgson read it online it's also on our Facebook page as is this so if you like our, our content please share it and uh, we're also on YouTube at the Israel Brief. If you like us there, please click on that red subscribe button. And we're on Twitter, which is where all good and angry people go these days to communicate. You can find us at Lay of the Land with the digit 5. Hit us with a shout out. So with today's edition of the Israel Brief, I'm Rolene Marks. I might go have myself a dish of haagen or Golders or something else that is local and uh, keep cool in this very, very hot Israeli weather. And you and I will have a date, same time, same place, tomorrow. Take care.